All right. Now joining the show, we have on Maloney High grad and Central Connecticut State baseball player, Elliot Good. Elliot, what's going on, man? How are you? Glad to be on here. I'm, I'm happy to get you on. We've been circling this a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad we finally got a time to work out for this. But uh, yeah, so you're up in New York right now for summer ball, right? Yeah, playing for the Geneva Red Wings in the perfect game league. Gotcha. So had the league already started up when you were when you had gotten up there um, because of like the playoffs and stuff? Or did it start up when you got there? Um, no. So the season started about a month ago. So when we got back from regionals, uh, like two days later, I came up and they already played like seven, seven games around there about that. Gotcha. Now I'm assuming it's guys all over the country, um, different colleges, stuff like that. So how is that dynamic kind of worked with you guys, especially you coming in uh, seven games into the season? And then I'm assuming other guys still coming in and out. So how has that dynamic kind of been for you guys? Um, it's been all right. We've been able to work with it. Um, I came in, you know, they're all accepting, you know, they're cool. Um, a couple of days later, my roommate uh, from UC Davis, he's from Los Angeles. He came and, and he's with us now. So it's oh, definitely, no. it's, it's definitely uh, a little different, but it's nice to, to get to know people from all around. That, that's pretty cool. Now, have you, had you played summer ball last year? Yeah, I played summer ball last year. I played in the only league that was available was either the Futures League or the, the Connecticut Baseball League, the CCBL. Yep. So I was in the CCBL. I played for the Manchester Meagles. Gotcha. Okay. Now, now, how did that work? Like, I'm assuming for that you didn't have like a host family or a roommate for that. I'm assuming you just commuted. Right. Yeah. From Meriden to Manchester, it's only like 25 minutes at, at the most. So I just commuted every day. Now, how has this been being away for this? Um, I'm assuming family probably isn't able to see a lot of your games. Like It's probably different from being at CCSU, too, because you're right near Meriden. So how has this kind of been for a change for you? Um, it's definitely different for sure. It's The people out here are different, uh, just about everything mainly. You know, I'm, I'm living with the host family right now, so hmm. it's, it's a little different. But um, overall, I think it's a good experience. Uh, it's good exposure. So overall, it's it's a good thing that's happening. So I'm able to work with it for sure. Now, did they hook you up with a summer job out there? I've got a couple of buddies that have played in different leagues, and they they say that's a big thing. They get you you find a job out there where it works with baseball. Right. It, it's kind of tough on this team because uh, usually we just wake up every morning, we work out, uh, hang out for a little bit, and then we can either get early work at the field around like twelve thirty one. And then we have to be at the field. If we are having a away game, we got to get there around like 2.33. But if we have a home game, we get around there like 3.34. So there's there's honestly not not a lot of room for a job. So I don't have a job up here right now. Gotcha. All right. Um, now you guys just played all different New York teams out in the upstate area? Yeah. So in the perfect game league, there's a couple different divisions. Um, I think, I believe the Jamestown Tarp Skunks are in, in our division, the Elmira Pioneers. Um, the Newark Pilots, the Geneva Red Wings, which is us. But there's, I think there's like three different divisions with a bunch of different teams. Gotcha. So we, okay. we just play all those different teams. Nice. And then how do playoffs work for that? Is it, um, like you said, the different divisions, is it certain teams get pulled from that? Or what's the deal? I think so. Okay. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm not quite sure. But I, I would think it's something like that for sure. Okay. Now, so coming out of high school, you're a Maloney High grad, um, played football, baseball. Did you play any other – any winter sports? Yeah, I did basketball just for fun, just for okay. fun. Now, football, we – and being an Enfield guy, we scrimmaged you guys my – uh, year. Yep. I remember that. that. And that was the year you guys were – you guys were real good too. So, uh, coming – like, baseball aside, did you get recruited at all to play uh, college football as a quarterback? So the, the only year I started varsity was my senior year. Mm -hmm. I was out junior year with a back injury. So I didn't really have too much exposure. Um, if I was going to play uh, college football, I probably would have invested in a, like a, a prep year mm -hmm. to, to like to get myself out there more. But um, out of senior year, I had a couple of schools like Western New England wanted me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I could have gone to a couple of different of those schools in, in that uh, conference for sure. Gotcha. So when it came down to it, it you, when did you figure out baseball was going to be 
the move for you? Like when did the recruitment start heating up on your end when it came to baseball? Um, so I would say spring of my junior year. Okay. Uh, during then, that's when uh, a couple of schools started contacting me and everything like that. But um, I had already committed to Central before my senior year of football. So after football ended my uh, senior year, like during the winter around there, I was kind of like up in the air with like what to do. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know if uh, I wanted to do a prep year. It was definitely something I thought about. But before any of that even like happened, I was already like committed to Central. So Gotcha. Now, in uh, I, I'm a big fan. I like hearing like recruitment stories. So, do you have any horror stories from recruitment? Like any coaches that you had issues with? I, you don't have to name the team or the name, but was there at any point like any issues you had with uh, coaches or just the university in general? Um, I'm gonna say I didn't have any of those horror stories, but um, I guess the funny thing is I committed to Central without even meeting Coach Hickey or head coach. Like I. <laughs> I, had, uh, I took a tour with Coach Hall, one of our assistant coaches. Uh, he seemed really nice. They had just come off a, a conference championship. You know, the field's nice. It's all turf. Uh, the school is not too big, but it's not too small at the same time. It, it just seemed like a perfect fit for me. And going to play Division One baseball was a dream I've had since I was little. So, you know, I was like, might, might as well. So I, I, I committed before even meeting the coach. <laughs> Now, now, what other schools were really in on you that had expressed a lot of interest, um, Division One, Division Two level? You know, I'll be honest, dude. Um, Central was one of the first schools, like, right away to come after me. So, I mean, I had a couple D3s and, like, D2s I was talking to, mm -hmm. but it was nothing, like, serious at that point. But as soon as, as – I'll be honest, as soon as Central, uh, you know, they offered me and I was, I was all in. Gotcha. That's that must have been a pretty good feeling knowing that you'd have that you could commit right before your senior year. You kind of have that weight off your shoulders. I know you said it, it, it made you question it a little bit after football had started or uh, football ended. But yep. in general, that must have been a pretty nice feeling to have going into your senior year, knowing that you've got an option and you're you're pretty much set. Right. Yeah, it was definitely a big weight off my shoulders, my parents shoulders for sure. Um, you know, it was a goal I've had and my parents knew it was a goal I've had. So once, once I was able to commit, it was, it was definitely a big weight off our shoulders for sure. Now going back a little bit to high school football, your senior, you guys played in the state championship game, right? You played hands. Correct. Yeah. We, we lost the hands, the big powerhouse. They're, that must they're have, pretty going in, especially like CCC, I think everybody, when it comes down to it, um, the whole CCC roots for whoever's going to be playing in the state championship games, because it's pretty much run by the FCAC when it comes down to it. Uh, like you get the right. Darians, the New Canaan's. So going into that game, what was your thought knowing you're, you're going against a team with like hand that has multiple division one guys, a lot of guys that are going to be division three stars. What right. was your guys' mentality heading into that game? So they had only let up, I would say, anywhere, I think it was either seven points or 14 points with, when they had all their starters in. So, so we knew it was going to be a battle like, as soon as the game started, like it was going to be tough, but um, I think going into the game, we just, we had a lot of confidence. I mean, even, even though we lost, it wasn't, it wasn't too close to the game, but uh, I believe we deferred uh, at the, at the coin toss. So we were kicking off and uh, we had done a lot of onside kicks that year. Mm -hmm. So we started off with an onside kick and we actually recovered the ball. So we had a lot of energy right from the start. We were all pumped up. And then of course our coach calls, calls out, uh, all verticals yeah very first play so so the first play you know my heart's beating I'm like oh boy I, I better make this happen <laughs> and uh I threw the ball to the receiver and I kind of under threw it I kind of under threw it so the defender it tipped off his fingers and as soon as it tipped off his fingers I was like oh man here we go and then and then I uh, our receiver caught it off the tip off and we scored a touchdown right away so that was it was we were pumped up like the crowd was roaring like it was it was definitely uh it was definitely very exciting that's great, especially when you recover the onside kick in that situation. You have to go – you have to take the shot right away. There's really right. no other sure. option for you to – in the state championship, you guys are underdogs in that game. There's no other way you want to go about right. it. You have to take the shot. Yeah, for sure. Now, for sure. The, in Meriden, it's you guys and it's, there's Maloney and Platt. How big is that rivalry um, come Thanksgiving? Because, um, like, there are – there's the, the normal Thanksgiving Day games, like the big ones, the – Southingtons versus Cheshire's, East Catholic versus Northwest. 
Um, but like, how big is that plat uh, Maloney one? Um, it it gets very rowdy for sure. If you're from the if you're from the east side of the train tracks, you know you're you're with Maloney. If you're on the west side of the tracks, you're with Platt. So definitely a lot of friendships uh, get pushed to the side mm -hmm. for that game. Um, you know the Stoddard Bowl's been happening for fifty plus years now. It's it's definitely it's definitely a crazy game. It goes it's pretty much back and forth. It's been back and forth for the past like ten years now. So it it can go either way. Unfortunately, my senior year we lost. But we were we were, uh, we were able to get back at them in the semifinals of the playoffs and, and be Platt for that. So it it sucks it sucks we lost uh, mm -hmm. the Stoddard Bowl, but it was kind of bittersweet when we beat them in the playoffs to get in the state championship. Yeah, I was gonna say they so that game that they won in the Stoddard Bowl that pushed them into the playoffs, right? Correct. That's crazy. They uh, they weren't even supposed to make the playoffs, but something happened with Bristol Central where like they had a soccer player who went to the football team to kick and like, I guess you can't do that. So they had to forfeit all the games that, that they, uh, that they played with him and wow. Platt was one of them. So, so it was either, it came down to the very last game where they were either going to win and, and get into the playoffs or lose and not make it. And, and they, they won. That's crazy. Wow. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. now, now baseball ends up working out for you. You're uh, at division one CCSU. Um, now, um, your freshman year, did you get any uh, play time at all? I know it was a – or no, it was a weird season, so you guys probably didn't have a ton of games. Yeah, we, we had about 12 games, so so I don't think any freshman on, on the team played that year. Yeah, no. So, yeah, we, we played about 12 games, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't get any time. And so, as an athlete going in, especially – it's different. Like I had my freshman season of football, winter sports pretty much had their whole season spring sports. You guys just get going as a freshman. You're probably pumped up about that. It's your first college season. Right. Having that taken away with you, what the mental aspect of it, how did you kind of deal with that? Um, it was hard at first for sure. You know, the first like month or so, it was kind of like up in the air, like whether or not we we're going to go back or not, or this right. season was going to happen or not. And then eventually they just, the conference canceled the season which was a big bummer because, you know, there were some seniors on that team who were, who were really good guys, great teammates, great players, and unfortunately they couldn't play. So it was definitely hard on all of us. But, um, you know, just waking up every day and not being able to go to, to school, see your boys and be able to play, it's definitely hard. It was, it was hard for sure. It, was, it wasn't, wasn't the best time, I'd say. Yeah. Now, what, working out, like how did you kind of deal with that with especially – Everybody went about it, I think, in different ways. So how did you kind of yeah. manage that with gyms being closed and there being, like, restrictions? I don't know how Meriden was, but I know some towns around Enfield were shutting down the tracks. They were taking down basketball hoops. It was yeah. it was crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of people in Meriden. So the city the city shut down all, all public places. They, they took the hoops off. They, they took the rims off the hoops uh, at the high schools. You know, they blocked off all the, all the tracks and all, all the turf fields. It was it wasn't the best, but me me and my boys we kind of you know snuck on the field a little bit yep. just so we could get our work in. But um, I think a month into quarantine, I started paying for this remote program because mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple weights in my garage. I have like I have a bench set and I have like a couple couple weights to throw around and stuff like that. So I was paying for that for a little bit. Um, once it started getting warmer out, you know started working out I live on a hill like a huge hill so I started like running sprints up the hill just trying to okay. trying to be creative like try to do like everything I can that I have yeah and uh basically basically that was that was basically what I did you know uh we snuck onto the turf field we basically just threw and took ground balls at that mm -hmm. point just long tossing and stuff like that just to get the arm loose and you know take our minds off about what was happening in the world so yeah it was you just had to kind of be creative and figure out it was such a tough time. You just got to figure out what you can do to try to get better. But uh, right now, so going in uh, the, the fall semester, it's still, you don't know if there's going to be a season um, right. fall sports get canceled majority, like some winter sports are getting canceled. Now yeah. where, where's your head at like in say maybe December when you're it's the season still may be in limbo. Um. It was definitely a shocker that they canceled fall sports. It was not a great sign for spring sports. Yeah. So um, 
it was looking it was looking pretty good for a season. You know, our coaches were like, all right, you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, you know, stay out of trouble. Don't don't go out anywhere. Just just hang out in your dorms. You know, do the right thing and good things will happen. And that's that's what we did. And fortunately, we were able to have a season. So. Now, did you guys have any issues with guys? Because I know some campuses were super, uh, super strict. Others were a little bit more lenient when it came down to that. So, and what was your team protocol when it came to that? If a guy got caught going out, um, I think if you got caught going out or someone threw a party like that, they would just throw you in a quarantine immediately. I know a couple of guys on our team got COVID throughout the fall and in the spring season, so they would do contact tracing and all the stuff like that. And fortunately, you know, we were going out with. With, with everybody so contact tracing kept it down to like one two maybe three or four people but um unfortunately one of my roommates got covid and uh you know all all of us in our room uh we had to we had a quarantine it was like as soon as the the first practices for the spring season started which was which was frustrating but um you know i, I guess it all worked out in the end for sure yeah now so you figure out the season's coming up um what what where is your uh when you're coming into the season knowing it's going to happen what role do you think you're going to have in the season and how did that maybe change as the season went on and as more games were being played um I was fighting pretty hard to to get a spot at at shortstop and wherever I could so it basically came down to you know I was going to play like every other day or every third game, something like that. You know, me and Matt Bertacci, who played shortstop, uh, we, were, we were fighting to play for sure. So it was we, – we went out there every day. We battled. We got each other better. And um, it, it all worked out. Now, the, the big – so you, the, the big video that kind of went viral throughout all of baseball was the video you guys uh, in the NEC final versus Bryant where the energy is just coming out of the dugout. Yeah. Uh, yeah. well, like that whole experience, how did you guys kind of channel that energy, just get pumped up? And that pretty it, – you guys winning that too and seeing that was just an awesome, an awesome thing to see. Yeah. So I'll start from the beginning. We played Sacred Heart the first game. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great game. We won. We had a lot of energy. And the next game in the winner's bracket, we played Bryant. Um, they they played well. They they pitched well. They hit well and, all, and everything – they they did was was perfect and they beat us so after that game we're like you know we can either pack it in or yeah. or we can all come together and, and and win this thing so in the loser's bracket we played sacred heart that was a close game we won by one or two runs and after that game uh we had to play bryant right after okay so we're we're in the locker room we're playing meek mill we're playing future we're going crazy in the locker room. we're like we're not we're not leaving <laughs> we're winning this thing we're going nuts we're jumping up and down and we just kept that same energy in, in the in the dugout our our players out there they kept the same energy um not i'm not gonna say we stole all the energy from bryant but but we we had the energy that game so we, we end up winning that game mm -hmm. and and uh towards the end of the game it was raining and the next day it was supposed to downpour. So so it was kind of up in the air if we're gonna have to play a third game, the championship game after that. So finally after after we win, we win the second game against Bryant, we uh we they decided we'll play we'll play the next day. So um so the next day we come to the field, it's pouring, there's puddles all over the field, the tarps on the field, you know, the warning track is underwater. Basically everywhere there was dirt, it was underwater. Yep. And at, at a certain point, it was like, all right, if we can't play this game, they're just going to give the automatic win to Bryant because they're, they're the one seed and we're the two. Okay. But, you know, they're, they're just automatically going to take it. So we're like, we're like, no way this is happening. Like, like we're not going out this way. This isn't going to happen. So the game was, I think this was started at one, it got postponed to three, and then finally got postponed to five. Mm -hmm. So at like three o'clock, we all grabbed like uh, plastic cups we all grab like trash bins stuff like that we all go out into the field uh we roll our pants up we take our socks and shoes off we literally start shoveling the water off the field like ourselves yeah like, the grounds crew was like the grounds crew was working with us but while we were doing this brian was just watching us like it's it's it, it's like brian didn't even want to play they, they probably like, did they watching. i mean they they 
they're waiting for the game just to get called so they can get thrown into the bracket. So that that they that must have just been for them just so demoralizing watching it. Like, right. damn, these dudes want to play this bad. This is that's crazy. It, it came down to a certain point when we were in front of their dugout while they were in the dugout, like watching us. We we're in front of their dugout, just shoveling the water out. We had guys, we had guys for like out there for like three hours trying to get all the water off. You know, the ground screw was starting to get mad at us because, like, at a certain point, I was like, all right, we can only do so much. We were like, nah. And we're playing. So, eventually, when when we could play, it yeah. was like, oh, boy, this is this is going to be fun. They Brian, Brian knew it was coming for sure. Where was the NEC uh, championship this year? Uh, it was at Dodd Field in uh, Norwich, okay. Connecticut. It, yeah, it's there okay. every year. It's there every year. So that was kind of for you guys, like a mutual, uh, like a, it was like a mutual home place for you, for both you guys, you and Brian. So that must have been pretty cool too. Right. Yeah. A couple of guys are, it's in Norwich and Montville's right next to it. We have a couple of oh. guys from Montville. We have a couple of guys from that area. So it's like, it's like right in their backyard. So it's basically home for them. You know, buddy Dwayne's from Montville and he was like, he was a star player of the tournament. He was like nine for 19, two home runs. He was unbelievable in center field. It was he was the he was the tournament player. Um, he he put on a show for us. You know he definitely put the team on his back and and helped us helped us win those games for sure. Now following that, so you guys win the NEC championship. You you get the bid to the regional. You get put in the Eugene regional. And like myself, I saw that the four teams there. I'm like, that's I'm like that's a tough draw. You get Oregon who's hosting it. LSU, who's a usual powerhouse, and Gonzaga, you don't know too – I didn't know too much about them, but you assume that they're a solid program. But, right. I mean, you guys, box score-wise, seemed like you hung in with them. I mean, you put up 10 runs against Oregon, and which usually when you put up that much, you're going to win the game. So, I mean, you guys battled with them, which I think was awesome. So, what was that just in general, going out to the West Coast and playing high-level programs like that? What was that whole experience like for you? So before the uh, before they announced what team was going where, uh, we we're like, all right, Oregon is definitely like a top five place we want to go to. Yeah, because Oregon, Oregon's just sick, dude. Their the gear, facility, the facility, everything there. You want you everything? Want to everything about it. Oregon is just sick. Yeah, yeah. So as soon when once that got once that got announced, we were going there. We were pumped up. We're like, all right, you know, we at that point we got we got nothing to lose, you know. Mm. So so when the game started, um, they put up a couple runs. We put up a couple runs. I think it came down to a point where it was like, all right, they're up 13. We were down by like four or five. And then, then we brought it, we brought it back to, to 10. So we, we ended up losing 13 to 10, but you know, the whole game, uh, our guys, we just battled the entire time. Our pitching was good. Our hitting was great. I think they only allowed up. I think the most amount of runs like in a single game at home, they allowed that year, this year was like four or five. And we put up 10 on them. Like, like, come on, like, we, we definitely I, battled for sure. Yeah, uh, and you don't – a lot of people probably weren't expecting that, too, with Oregon being a higher-seeded team. Like, they're probably not expecting a team from what most would consider a lower-level Division One conference right. to go out there and battle – pretty much battle them to the last inning. Uh, it's not yeah. something you're going to – you really would would have seen across the all the re, other regionals. Right, yeah. I'm Like I said, I'm very proud of the guys. You know, we all, we all did our best, you know, you know, there were a couple of errors. We left a couple of people on base, which, which is baseball, though. You know, mm-hmm. you can't can't really do too much about that. But we put up ten runs up, up on them. You know, we we played pretty much to the best of our abilities that day. So you guys lose the Oregon, then you get dropped into the the losers bracket. You play LSU, which right. again, that's a another just tough draw. That's a um, a powerhouse SEC team, especially them being. They're probably a mid-tier SEC team, which is probably better than the majority of teams in all of college baseball. So right. that playing them is um, is tough. But another game you guys battled in. Right. Like, honestly, before, like, some of these games against Oregon and LSU, it's like, you know, you're thinking of these big, huge, like, powerhouse schools and, like, all these kids are probably disgusting. And now that they aren't, but, like, sometimes, like, when you step on the field and you see these kids are like, oh, like they're the same size as us, you know, they're just, they're just kids like us. So that was definitely a confidence booster, but uh, the game against LSU, they, they, they threw their Sunday starter and he was like 88 to like 91 with a good, uh, with a good breaker. 
And I think the hardest we saw that year was like 95, 96. So we're like, all right, we got this guy, you know, mm -hmm. we, we can definitely compete and hang in there. And that, that's what we did. We put up, we put up two in like the first two innings. And then in like the third or fourth, we, we made it five and we're like, let's go, you know, no, no Martinez had a huge three run home run on top of their, on top of their like, like batting facility in right field. Holy um, yeah, we were, we were definitely pumped up for sure. You know, we thought, we thought we were going to win that game. And unfortunately, uh, you know, they, they brought it back to five to five mm -hmm. in the eighth. And then in the 10th inning, they had bases loaded and they hit a single right up the middle. And there's like, it's like nothing you can do about that. You know, it was, yeah. it was, it was heartbreaking for sure. But at the same time, it was like, you know, we, we could have beat LSU. So it's all right. Especially to take them to extras. That's huge. That's something, right. like I said, you don't expect a team like CCSU really, if they make the tournament, you don't expect them to win really any games. And then you battle two top teams in there. So, I mean, that, that must have been a great feeling, even though you don't win a game, you're still battling with these guys. Right. I mean, I mean, Hey, two years ago, when, before I came, uh, my senior year of high school, when they won the, when they won the tournament, they, uh, they beat California top. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're ranked 24 in the nation and they beat them. So, I mean, we, we can compete with any team for sure. We, we definitely had that confidence going in there, especially after we beat California. But like if we can beat them, then, you know, there's, there's no reason why we can't be another team like that. Yeah. Now be, being on that CCSU roster, it seems like there's a ton of Connecticut guys on that team. Yep. Um, do you have any guys on there that you played against in high school that it's kind of cool that now you get to play alongside of them? Right. Uh, there was a freshman this year who's from Meriden. He went okay. to Platt. So okay. there's, there's that rivalry, but we're boys now. Um, I'm not sure if I played against any other, any other guys. I think I played against one or two, but a couple other guys, like, you know, I met him at like the, the all-star game, the high school all-star game yeah. where like, like, I just knew him prior to that. So, yeah, I think, I think there's only, there's less than 10 guys who are from out of state. So it's, it's a lot of people know each other and they're, you know, there's good camaraderie and you know a lot a lot of the guys love each other which is That's which awesome. is good yeah now uh ellie i appreciate you coming on um one question we always ask at the end of the interviews um especially any athletes we have on or coaches something i'm super curious in what people listen to before games or what rituals yep. they have so a do you have any like pre-game rituals or like just day of that you strictly live by like won't break them until you're done with baseball and then B, you've got time for three songs before a game. What are those three going to be? So usually, usually we all listen to music before the game. Um, I try not to do too much like before the game. I try to get a good meal in me, get a good warm up before the game, so I'm ready to go. Um, top three songs. Like if you got if you got um, the aux for the speaker in the locker room, what what are the three you're throwing on? Oh, uh, we got of course you know classic. Got to throw dreams and nightmares in there. Yep. Meek Mill. Okay. That that just gets the boys fired up. Um, hmm. I'll throw in I'll throw in a little Dirk song, the uh, Neighborhood Hero. That's a good one. It gets the boys pumped up. It gets me pumped up at least. And then and then I'll, it's usually up in the air for the third one. I'll I'll let someone else take it. You know. Mm -hmm. So so th those are two songs I'll play for sure. That'll get me pumped up. All right. Nice. Nice. Well, Elliot, I appreciate you coming on. Good luck the rest of the summer ball. And uh, hopefully we'll get you back on in the future, hopefully before uh, next college baseball season. But like I said, I appreciate you coming on. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No appreciate problem. It. Thank you for listening to this episode of the My Parents Office podcast. Stay tuned for the two episodes we got coming next week. Thank you.